So hello and welcome to the new video. This is my league starter for the 3.25 um, Archmage Hierophant. So let me just give you a quick warning before you commit to yourself um, to the build guide. I will not improve the build guide at all. For me, this build is just to have fun with the build and farm some T16 until I can change over to my real build that I want to play. So if you decide to recreate the build and you like it and you have fun with it and you would like to have some improvements, most likely you're gonna have to find someone else. I don't think that's gonna be a problem as the the playstyle of the Archmage this league is very popular. So finding someone, you know, scaling the Archmage to like a mage bot level, that's not gonna be a problem, I would say. But that's something that I will not do because I'm not interested in this type of a build, actually. I'm just having fun as like a league starter um, with this build. But on the other hand, if you want to see how bad you can have your gear and still be able to do the full Atlas, you can farm T16 maps and you can do, let's just say, I would say a little bit slower, but you can still kill the Guardians on the T16 maps. That you, that's what you're going to see in this um, quick clip. And while on the uh, bag the gear topic, that's one of the things I'm really proud of this build because uh, my gear is absolutely shit. But I'm still able to uh, farm T60 maps, do blighted content alpha, you know, those kind of things that I actually do after, let's say, about one week after the league. But relatively, after two days, I'm able to farm quite relatively well the T60 maps. So I would say. In the, on that notice, the build is absolutely great because you know it doesn't require too much. Uh, obviously, the Ice Nova of Frostbolt that's probably gonna cost you about one divine, at least that's how much I did pay in the day two of the league. And I was able to f start farming, progressing all of my Atlas. So, if you're still thinking, you know, should you start an Archmage or not, maybe you never played an Archmage, I would say like this. If you have some kind of backup plan, like you know, let's say you want to play a, like an end game build for like like in some kind of Inquisitor energy blade, but those builds require with a bit more currency, then yes, then a, then a higher font Archmage is actually quite good for you because you able you're gonna be able to farm uh, most of the currency on this build relatively cheap, and you, you can save up a lot of currency, and you know then you can respect. And here's my first attempt of killing the Hydra just to get myself the favorite slot. now like very early early leveling when we're talking about like you know when you start and how do you actually get to, le to about level 32 when you can start playing with the Archmage. Firstly I was using Rolling Magma. This is one of the better spells that you can get because it bounces two times and you can have like a small AoE effect so that's quite good and I was leveling that until I could get myself Arc. Then you have to compare between them two, which one is feels better for you. But from about level 31, when I actually got myself the Spell Echo, the Archmage and the Inspiration, I was strictly using um, Arc and I dropped down myself uh, the Magma Orb. It was just at that point very you know, in irrelevant bad skill. So that was my four link for like, you know, once you get them, so that was Arc, Spell Echo, Archmage and Inspiration. So that was that was my four link because you can probably around the docks area you're gonna get yourself the you know four link. Then when I was uh, killing those uh, Act bosses, the last Act bosses, I was swapping Arc with Firestorm because Firestorm has a little bit more uh, damage on on bossing, but it feels pretty much I would say. Uh, playing with Firestorm feels very bad when you are generally mapping. 
the Arc by far is just feels way better. And I was using Arc until about T7, T8, because you know the Arc still did feel fine, but there were some um, rare monsters that they were a little bit more tankier, and you know, and that was like you know, you know, Firestorm did feel at that time a little bit better. But I did stick with the arc, and eventually I went into the, you know, ice nova frostbolt. So now, with the bandit choice, you have a couple um, choices. I would say either you can go Alira if you if you're missing the resistance, and that's what I would actually recommend, because when you're gonna be starting as uh, this build as a elite starter, most likely you're gonna be struggling with the resistance. So I would go with the Alira. But killing all of the bandits and getting one one point is actually viable as well. You could get yourself um, the movement speed or maybe the flat life from oak so all of those options are quite legit and are not, nothing like you know this is better or that's better i would just say simply from the league start point of view i would just pick up the alira because you know there you're going to be missing the resistance now moving on to pantheons there's not much happening um branking because you need some kind of stone avoidance and i'm using the aberrat for for the ignite i don't need actually the ignite i need the burning ground because i'm as usual i'm doing my red altar so i need the, bur the burning ground so moving on to the ascendancy classes uh, i mean the ascendancy points you just want to go arcane blessing as of your first point this just gives you damage cast speed increased mana region that's everything that you need on the campaign when you're going to be doing your first two pointer and then you're going to go a second point third point and the last point, the new changes to endurance charges quite feel quite good for this build. It gives us a lot of defense, but that's not something that you're gonna be needing um, until about, I would say, T10s and red maps. So I, I would not rush those two points right away. With the passive tree, I mean, I don't have any cluster jewels. There is nothing happening special over here. Uh, so it's pretty much st straightforward over here. I only have two jewels. One is uh, for the strength because I need some extra strength. So I have some strength and increase maximum mana. The cold over time, that's a dead start. So don't even bother yourself with that. Then another jewel is uh, some dexterity, increase mana and mana region. So that's always nice. Now, if you're thinking about how should you progress the, the atlas, I mean, sorry, the passive tree, what I would do is this, I would start over here, I would go over here and go over here. This is Caspi, this feels very nice. Then I will grab the life nodes over here, I will go over here, grab those two nodes and I will come back later on for them. Then I would go over here, go over here, take the elemental overload and then take those cast speed nodes the, you know that's gonna help you out greatly because you know having a lot of cast speed early on in the game feels really good the only one thing uh, that you can change with the passive um, the, the passive is this mastery i'm using for the you know the mastery to open the chest since i'm doing a lot of blighted content i do really enjoy having this uh, in mastery to open the chest but if you're not doing the blight or you're not gonna be doing the blights like uh, like me then you simply want to take the third one from the top when you increase the cast speed for each different non-instant spells that you cast since you're gonna be casting two spells that are non-instant one is gonna be your main skill and the second one's gonna be sigil so you're gonna get 12 cast speed just for free you know just for using the two skills so that's like a one mastery that you can change. Like flask, you just need some kind of random flask from like, you know, from the floor that you need to have like, like bleed immunity and whatever else you can get. Mana flask is quite um, very useful to have because whenever you pop yourself the, the arcane cloak that's gonna drain you a lot of, a lot of mana from you. So you wanna pop your mana flask to recoup a lot of the you know some cost of that missing mana so you won't get like one shot at and then i have some um like movement flask and yes i do crit but you know i don't gain the the crit um extra damage because i'm early overall uh, build but you can still crit and get some extra charges that's helped me out 
getting my Quicksilver files more often. So now I'm gonna show you my gear. Well, my gear is very bad and, I ha and I'm not gonna be improving the gear because simply I'm not interested. So for the one, what I was looking for when I was doing my June missions, I was trying to unveil myself, increase spell damage and get anything else useful. The only useful stats on this one is actually the implicit, the, the unveil from June, the increased spell damage and mana, mana region, the cold damage to spells, that gives me some damage, and then I craft myself maximum mana. And I keep myself like purity of elements and eternal blessing. Those, just those two combinations, I mean, the eternal blessing and the purity of elements does not cost me mana. What I mean is does not, the purity of elements does not reserve mana, so that's why. Then my second one is pretty much the same thing. It has increased spell damage and mana region. That's like a unveil when you get yourself some kind of random wand. And the other stats that I have like some kind of low lightning spell damage. That's pretty much useful, useless, sorry, because you know, it doesn't add too much. And then I crafted myself and increased cast speed. And I'm keep, keeping my one like a frost blink and sigil of power that I'm, every now and then I'm gonna place. So you're gonna see that blue ring. It looks something like that. And I'm using a normal frost blink just to you know blink around uh, every now and then. And yes, I know you could do yourself the frost blink of wintry and you know scale the cast speed, but like I say, I'm not interested in, in the into that. Then my amulet is just Chaos resistance, some mana, you know, and I have crafted myself some kind of craft, and I have a mind drinker to give me a little bit more increased maximum mana and 2% mana on kill. Again, pretty bad, but <laughs> there's nothing else to say about this. This is the only unique mandatory item that you can have, that, that you need, actually, you need. And I'm gonna make a separate timestamp explaining a little bit about this item. And the gems that you're gonna be keeping in this helmet is gonna be Frostbolt, Punishment, Slower Projectile, and Greater Volley. Now, now, Slower Projectile is not actually mandatory, you can have it or not. It, for me, it feels quite good playing with the Slower Projectile, but you know, you can swap it around however you like. Now. My rings are pretty much just like, you know, resistance ring. There's nothing else to say. I got it from um, one of those ships that you send with, with Tujin from the, from your new freaking city, whatever that's properly called. The second ring is pretty much the same thing. I got it from the floor, or oh, I don't even know. I just pretty much found it and, you know, that's what I have. Then my gloves are pretty much the same thing. I just found them. They had like a open suffix. I could craft myself the chaos, the hybrid chaos resistance. And I was lucky enough to get myself the, the lightning glitch as this is, uh, this is uh, like a quite important stats on the gloves. And the rest of them is like, you know, pretty much bad stats, so. My boots are pretty much again resistance, some movement, life, resistance, nothing more, I would say pretty bad. The belt again, mana, maximum energy shield, resistance, crafted life, pretty bad, nothing you know, good over here. I'm even missing some links over here that I don't necessarily care about it. So yeah, you can definitely improve the, the gear because my gear is actually bad. Oh, I would so probably forgot. For my gloves, I have Arcane Cloak, I have Automation, Moderation, and Arcane Surge support. The Arcane Surge is not necessarily needed, but, you know, I have an extra socket, so why not? So with my Ice Nova, I keep Ice Nova, I keep Spell Echo, Intensify, Arc Mage, Lightning Pen, and Inspiration. Inspiration is very important because you're going to be balancing uh, the mana, I would make a separate time, sp time stamp uh, on that as well. So probably um, a lot of you is gonna be first time playing with the, kit with the Kitaba helmet. And if you read the first line, you have 50% to trigger socketed spells. 
right? When you spend a hundred mana up front. So what does that mean? It means whatever spells you spell, in this case I'm doing uh, Ice Nova or Frostbolt, it has to say a hundred mana. In my case it's 162. For you, it has to say the bare minimum it has to be a hundred. If you if you won't have a hundred, you will not proc um, any helm and any gems in your helmet. Even if you think you're gonna spend, let's say, ninety five, because you're gonna do two cast, this doesn't work like that. If the spell has to have the bare minimum a hundred, and you have to see the bare minimum a hundred on your tooltip, and then you will actually proc. All of your spell uh, games socketed in your helmet. Now, for me, this helmet is actually one of the better ways, um, like triggering the frost bolts, just to make this uh, build a little bit less clunky. Less cl clunky. Yeah, there is a way that you could self cast. I tried that. That feels very freaking bad. I didn't. I didn't like it at all. I tried the version of the uh, with the spell brand or whatever that's called that you place a brand and he does all of the frostbolt casting and you have like a one two combination again didn't really like it so i'll just say you know what the kitava helmet is a mandatory thing and i'm just gonna use it so this helmet actually has you know a lot of negative as, as well negatives of the like the kitava is that sometimes you can you can have a very bad rng because you you have to remember you only you only have you don't have a hundred percent chance uh, when you're casting a spell. You only have half of that. So sometimes what you're gonna be have when you, you're gonna be moving around around the map and you're gonna be trying to like proc a frostbolt and you're gonna be like oh there's no frostbolt there's no frostbolt there's a frostbolt right so you can be on the bad receiving an RNG and sometimes that might cause you like you know doing less damage or you're not gonna be proking at all and then you might actually die but sometimes does happen to me that's why i'm keeping myself uh, in my helmet like a pro i mean slower approach so then what i do sometimes spawn the frost bolts and i just walk behind them and i just use them uh, i use my ice nova so i can guide them like slowly like you know towards the enemies and i can just move on just just count you know and press the frost bolt so I mean, sorry, the Ice Nova, and I can track them. But obviously, every now and then, you're gonna be stuck and you're just gonna pretty much die. You know, it's RNG. You cannot do anything about it. It is what it is. That's what, that's what you have to accept. Now, having a lot of mana region on this build is quite good, and I would actually say it's almost actually mandatory and having a flask as well. What's gonna happen since I have an automation set up in my gloves with the arcing clock? Arcing clock will take a lot of your mana. So let me just demonstrate to you. Bam, you're missing a lot of mana. You will gain it and you will recover it a lot of it, but remember the damage still goes on your mana as well because of the mind of the matter and being a higher fan. So not only you're draining your mana by using the skills like the Ice Nova using the arcane clock and getting the damage that's why having a high amount of mana region and having like you know a mana flask this will very really help you out especially when you know when you time your mana flask uh, you know you use your arcane clock you see your low on low on mana then you pop your mana flask and that's gonna help you out so i was able to finish up all of the normal maps i'm still missing some unique maps you know like over here and so on but you know from the just like the farming the t60 maps the build with the current version that i have is fully capable of doing that if you're wondering what kind of content i'm actually farming um, this is my atlas passive it's pretty much the same atlas passives that i use for pretty much most of most of the builds that i do i pretty much run blights I do, I do Alva, all of the points on the Alva, and I'm just using the new nodes for the scarabs, you know, because then I, later on the, I can sell the scarabs or I can do something with them. And I'm running the red altas over here as well. The only uh, change that I did for now, 
I cannot ruin the the faster monsters like over here with the with the blights because you know my my character is a little bit too weak, and I do fail a lot of those blights when I take those two nodes, and I tried even the the combination with the Cassia Pride and that didn't help out as well. So I decided myself that I'm gonna skip those two nodes over here for now, and I can farm blights very easily. So that's my tactic for, you know, for this build. That's why I'm actually I'm farming with this build. If you made this far in the video, thank you for watching.